Hi, this is Carl Kohlglazer. In this video, I want to talk about a little standalone Eurorack case that I've been working on, one might say um, developing. And the purpose of this particular case, the focus of everything here is that it packs all of the modules that I do some sort of customization, hacking, or development on. Here, I'd like to talk about the different modules within the case, what they're doing within the overall system, and with a specific focus on how I go about hacking these modules to make them very extensible and fit the various needs of what I'm trying to get out of my Eurorack system. Now, the goal for this being a standalone portable system is I can put it right here on my desk and have it all very accessible to my hands while I'm working on the code for these various modules. That makes it possible to iterate and make changes very, very quickly and leads to a very, very nice workflow. For my walkthrough of this patch, I'm gonna be moving from left to right within the case and talking about how these different modules function within the system. So first on the top here, I have mostly utility modules. These are all from 2HP. Here is one of the voices I like to use, the Pluck. It is a physical modeling, uh, I believe it's Car Plus Strong based uh, string synthesizing. Uh, it's basically just a bunch of comb filters. And then I have a dual VCA here. And then here's Tune, which I'm using as my quantizer. Over here, I have two mono modules. This is Ansible, which is super great at talking to uh, the Monum grid as well as USB MIDI devices. But in this case, I have it connected to the Crow, which is a collaboration with Whimsical Wraps. The Crow is here, it can run Lewis scripts in standalone mode, but I have it connected via USB to the Norn Shield where I'm running one of the little apps that I'm developing. This is called Flock, and the way it works is it simulates a flock of birds moving around in space. You can go through these settings to alter some of the behavior, and the birds move in such a way that they create very chaotic and unpredictable movement. I then have this movement get output into the Eurorack world with different gates representing uh, avoiding procedures if the birds get too close to each other. And I can also map to CV the different positions within the X and Y axis or their rotation within the space. And so I have that currently connected through the quantizer into the voice right here. Some of the parameters are being controlled by the micro ornament and crime. And this is currently running Lorentz mode, which is another chaotic LFO generator. There are a lot of different applets that are installed on ornament and crime. At this point, I believe the teensy that is powering it is completely full. So in order to add any of my own applets, I have to decide which ones I want to delete, um, if I want to make any modifications or additional things there. Uh, the way I have it set up right now, though, it's just running all of the default ones. Next over here is the Nebulae V2 by Qubit Electronics. This module is mostly known for its role as a granular synthesizer. It can take different pieces of audio off of the thumb drive and really manipulate them through a built-in C sound script that it has running. But here I'm running my own script. I'm using a fork of the firmware by the TechnoBear that makes it very, very easy to run Super Collider patches on the Nebulae. This is actually behind the scenes, just a Raspberry Pi running Linux. So you can do a lot of hacking on it in a pretty easy manner if you're familiar with the whole Linux ecosystem. And so here I'm running a Super Collider patch that's just built uh, using one of the default add-on reverbs. And I have different parameters for that reverb matched to these different controls. Uh, it's a very, very nice 
reverb, uh, because it's running a Raspberry Pi, it can handle a lot of DSP load. Moving almost all the way to the right, we have the Daisy patch from Electrosmith. This is maybe the most obviously hackable module of the bunch. It's running a program that I wrote called Oliria, which is a set of different applets that kind of split these audio outs down the middle and can run different things at the same time. Right now it's sounding a little bit pitchy. Maybe I'll add some more of the pluck to just bounce it out. So the way that this particular patch works is these two left inputs are a pitch. And then these right inputs handle some of the FM modulations. And you can make some pretty gnarly sounds. So this is all being run on this little microcontroller here, which is the Daisy. And it has uh, a lot of the stuff built in that does smart DSP output. It all goes routed through the Daisy patch, so it's kind of custom designed for here. And I currently just have this running out through the Disting Mark IV, which is handling summing up these two outputs. Finally, everything goes out through the Nebulae into the headphone output of the case.